Hey everybody, I'm Ben. Welcome back to L Swan's Garage channel. Um, I just wanted to say first thing, I appreciate all the subscriptions and the views from my last video. It really inspires me to keep going with this and lets me know that you enjoy them. Um, sorry I haven't made a video in a while. It has been crazy busy. We have made so many containers and uh, it's been raining almost every single day. And if you see in the news, it is crazy. Maybe a month straight every day has been rain. Uh, so there's that, but I promise to catch up on it now uh, starting from this video. So for this video, I want to talk about Japanese plates. I know you probably have a little bit of knowledge about some of the basic plates, but I wanted to kind of go in a little bit more detail and you can find all kinds of information on them uh, online, uh, but I would just kind of like to share with what I know. Uh, so I've got some examples here. Uh, we're going to start with the K-Car plate. So what this is is 660cc or below. Um, this is your basic, basic K-Car plate with yellow on the black. Um, and this is hiragana, one of the three alphabets. This is uh, yo, right? Um, and here's your basic numbers. And then this is going to be the city or area where it's from. So in this case, this would be Yokohama. Um, the 580 is basically what series, and that could mean uh, every prefecture has different uh, things that they do for the series, but this could mean truck or car, two-seater, four-seater, uh, something around like that. Now, if you're from the military base, um, you're going to have an E right here, and that just lets everybody know that you're from the military base. Um, the military base, their cars are the same cars, except for their inspection is a lot cheaper um, than a regular Japanese person or a regular Japanese car. Um, and things are a little bit different. I'm not sure on all the details about that, but anyway, they're gonna have an E right here, same color and everything. Uh, just like this, um, just like this car behind me, it's, it's a K car, so it, it has the uh, yellow plate with the black lettering. Okay, so there's your K cars. Now, if you're driving a car that has 661cc or above, you're gonna have a white plate, okay? So, same as the yellow plate, all the stuff is exactly the same except for it's white on green, which means your car is 661cc or above. Now, same thing, you're gonna have the hiragana alphabet here, it's ya yeah on this case, and your city, which is Hachiochi on this plate. Um, and this is a 300 series, which means the car is about 2000cc, and I know that because I have one of these cars and one of these plates, so. Um, and five, I believe 500 is 2001cc uh, and above, and truck is like 800, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so those numbers are your, your different series of cars. Okay, so this is your basic Japanese plate that almost majority of the cars have. Now, if you are working for a corporation, okay, uh, you're going to see if it's a K car, the plate is going to be black with yellow letters. If it's a corporation or like government, something like that. Most of your postal vans, they're kind of like the sambar back here, uh, they have black with yellow lettering. Um, if it's a corporation and it's a bigger car, it's going to be green here with the white. They're going to kind of reverse that, right? Now, again, if you're with military, the plate is the same, except for instead of an E, you're going to have a Y, right? And this is basically all military plates have the Y here for 661cc CC and above, right? So there's your basic military plate. Now, how about custom plates? Okay, so... In Japan, you can't do letters here, unfortunately, but a lot of people do uh, custom numbers, and you can have like dot, dot, 15 or something. Uh, one of the most common ones that I ever see, and I, I believe every uh, A86 Corolla in Japan is Panda and has dot, dot, 86. Even the newer ones are dot, dot, 86, uh, so that's probably one of the most common ones. But, uh, you know, R34, dot, dot, 34, you know, things like that. Uh, so you can do custom plates. Now... Another cool kind of plate is this plate. While this looks like a normal plate, you still have your Hiragana alphabet and Sagamihara here, 300 series. This is actually a glow plate, right? So glow plates are pretty cool. Um, you can get them for K cars or for regular cars. They're not as popular as they used to be, um, but you can still get them. What you do is once you get your regular plate in, um, you can file a form and send off to have a glow plate actually made for your car. Um, and it's not that expensive. I actually want to get one eventually here in the future. Um, and you can also do custom like dot dot whatever, you know, 62 or something like that in a glow plate. Um, 
To be honest, they make glow plates for just about everything. Um, the K-Car one, it's yellow with black lit letters. Uh, it's numbers and things. Eh, it's okay, but I, I think this one is way cooler. Um, some of your, your corporations that have the green with the white, especially the bigger trucks and things like that, they, they can also get glow plates, and that's pretty cool when the white is lit up in the, in the green. That's pretty cool. So this is a glow plate that everybody wants. Okay. So this is a slash plate, okay? And uh, the thing about the slash plate is you've still got your prefecture here. This plate is like a rental plate. Now, what they use this plate for is, for example, if you get your registration and your inspection for your car, um, we have what we call the road insurance. The road insurance goes for about 25 months usually on small cars and 13 months for bigger trucks, right? Uh, I think it's over two ton. Um, so your first 24 months is just for driving on your regular plate. The last month is when you'll use this kind of plate. So what you have to do is you have to go to the city hall and rent this plate for one week, okay? And in, do in doing so, you have one week to use this plate to take your car to do its inspection or maintenance or just able to move it around in that last month of your insurance, okay? So that's what this plate's for. Now, if you've ever seen a plate that doesn't have the red slash but has the red all the way around the edges, that is a dealer plate, okay? And they use those when a brand new car comes off the line or um, I see them a lot on bigger trucks when they're getting the, the back box put on or some kind of bed put on. They use the, that kind of uh, dealer plate or even when you're using a car, you can use this one when a car's its life is finished and we're going to take it to the recycle yard. We can use this kind or, of course, you can use a dealer plate. Uh, same as like US, like, you know, you're just using the dealer plate to go wherever, you know, a dealer would need to take his car or their, the company car, right? Okay, so there's that kind of plate. Um, some other kind of plates... Um, bigger trucks, I guess they would be over four ton, have your basic, um, and they're not white. They are the corporation most times. They could be white, but most of the time they're going to be the green on the white. Uh, but their plates are about here, about this tall, and about that wide. They're much bigger. Um, I guess so you can see them better. I, I'm not real sure why. But, and like I said, you can also get those in glow plates, and a lot of people do. And that's pretty cool. Um, motorcycles, I'll tell you what I know about motorcycles <laughs> for the plates. Um, I know that if uh, regular motorcycle plates are about oh, half this size, right, and even a little shorter, um, your, let's see, what is it, uh, four, uh, 251, 251cc to, you know, infinity, is going to have a green plate almost exactly like this, but it's going to have a green edge all the way around it. Okay, so that is your, what we call Ogata motorcycle, or it's a big motorcycle. Um, 126 to, uh, let's see, 126 to 240, uh, 250, okay? Yeah, 126 to 250 is going to have a plate that looks just like this, but smaller, okay? Um, <laughs> it's so hard because I have to remember what they are. Uh, let's see. Your 91 to 125 plates are going to be pink. And sometimes on the pink ones, they cut the corners. I'm not real sure why they do that. It depends on different prefectures, but uh, sometimes they cut the corners. Uh, let's see. Whew. Mm, 51 to 90 cc is yellow with black. Yellow with black, yes. So uh, again, you're going to have yellow uh, with the black in the middle. Um, Kind of like K car one. Uh, okay, and there's another one. Uh, 50cc is black with white, I believe. Oh, sorry, blue with white. Blue with white. The the numbers are blue here, and then the white plate. Um, and then we have these what we call mini cars, but they're not cars. Um, they're like uh, three wheeler, four wheeler vehicles that are 50cc, and they don't require a helmet. A 50cc scooter requires a helmet. Um, if you have a regular car driver's license, you can also use the 50cc scooter without a special motorcycle license. Um, but these mini car ones, I think they are, gosh, what color are they? Uh, they are light blue with blue. That's right, light blue with blue. Uh, I guess this is light blue and then the letters are blue. Um, they're three-wheelers, four-wheelers, as long as they're not over 50cc. 
Um, sometimes you'll see those like electric carts that are like four wheel electric carts, two seater things. And you can drive them on the street and you don't need a helmet. Um, seems unsafe to me, especially for a place like Japan where, you know, everything's so strict, but uh, if that's what they want to do. Um, so those are basically your plates. Um, sometimes we will be able to get plates, uh, and I know my company sells them sometimes. Um, the way that works is that this plate, by having this plate means that you need to be paying your yearly road tax. Now, I know on this kind of plate here, because I have this kind of car, the yearly road tax is 45,000 yen, okay? So that means in two, two years of driving your car, you need to pay 90,000 yen to have this plate. Now, if you decide that you don't want to drive your car anymore, you can keep the car, sell it, whatever, but if you don't want to drive the car anymore, you can turn the plate in, okay? Every car is registered to one person, one person only, unless it's a corporation, right? Uh, and this is different for motorcycles and things like that. Uh, K-car, I think that the tax on this van for one year is 6,000 yen, 60 bucks, or you know, 55 bucks, something like that. Uh, but I'm talking about for big cars, right? And it depends on the class too. If this is 500, maybe it's more expensive. I, you know, I don't know for sure, but I know on 300, it's 45,000 yen. <laughs> so um, one thing that happens is uh, the owner, and I, I know I say this all the time, but it's the normal case here, has passed away and the family doesn't care about the car. The plate is still in the car. Nobody ever, you know, deregistered it. And of course he's not paying the tax, you know, anymore. So um, we do get a chance to acquire plates like that. Um, but that is a kind of a rare case. It happens a lot though, I guess you would say if, uh, if you're in this kind of business. Um, but that's how we're able to get some plates sometimes. Uh, another fact about plates, um, that's kind of interesting and kind of unfair at the same time. So the place where you register white plates and yellow plates is different. Uh, they're separate entities, right? And I'm not real sure why, uh, but one way that it makes a difference is that for this car, you don't need to have the police. Normally, if you have a car with a white plate, the police will need to come and check your parking space to make sure it is within two kilos of your home or company, and that it's uh, you know if you have a huge truck, then you're not parking in a little small you know car space, right? Um, K car doesn't have to have that. I don't know why. It seems unfair. They got to have parking spaces too, but for whatever reason, they don't have to have it, and the white plate does. Um, so yeah, maybe it's because it's bigger cars, but like I said, they still need a parking space, right? So anyway, that's just a little, another little fact about, uh, about the plates here in Japan. Also, when you, when you get these plates, the front plate will just be its regular bolts. The back plate will have one side regular bolt and a seal that is put on by the staff at the registration office um, that can only be broken to take the plate off, right? Um, and that's so you can't be trading plates and things like that or do anything kind of, you know, you know, risky with the plate. Um, anyway, so that's what I know about Japanese plates. Uh, sorry if it, <laughs> if it's a little off, I, I did the best I could, uh, especially on the motorcycle part. That's pretty difficult because there are so many different colors and types and I've only dealt with the bigger motorcycles. So, um, I hope this has been a little bit informative. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section or anything else that you would like me to cover. I'm totally open to going after anything that you are interested in. And I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. And uh, Ben out.